Hi and welcome. My name is Chawa and we're playing not for broadcast the time loop DLC. So, day 98 765 here be treasure. Let's continue. Oh. Sweetheart married a second mate. The age of ship's cat was when it got drowned. The number of conversations I've had with the pirate king. And the exact time I made me mar walk out the plank. You better start the and I'll fight some of you, dude. Yes, Captain Magnus, sorry, Captain Magnus. Please, you see yourself there? Eh? Don't be good to ready. Fuck off, Chester. Not you. Yarr! Just leaving that alone. Three. TV. We're not in the business of honey boy. We're in the business What's of telling this? people what to what and getting booty while we do. Yo ho! Yo ho! Okay. Let's not push it too far though. I'm gonna get all the way to this one. What has Carl been getting old? Oh, Lots of honey boy's got not but empty sails on top of his shoulders. Captain Magnus! Captain Dog. Gotta say, not sure I trust you in Lama. We pirates don't do. True enough! Sorry I be late. Ran into a couple of blackguards. Had to teach them a thing or two about manners. You must be Captain Wolf. Always thought it was strange there was the two. Oh, just means there's two blades to run you through if you miss me. <laughs> All right, you lot, get to it. We're going live in five, four, three, two. Yo ho! I be Captain Dogs. And I'm Captain Wolf. Yo ho! Tonight we got a very special announcement for everyone in the fleet, straight from the Pirate King himself, so listen. Damn straight. We ain't in the habit of repeating ourselves. Deep in dreadful school. In the line that can't be found. Captain Magnus has been working on something that will change the pirate's life. Be good! He's got a few things to say, and we got a few things to ask him, so keep What's watching. Oh, somebody's funny. Cheers! Dogs, that's one minute back and a second more. Guys, you that? Yo-ho! Yo-ho! I'm just saying, I don't think Pike's really said the word booty, you know, outside of film, so it's got different meaning. Shut it, Sprung! I'm the captain round here. With you. The captain's round here. Right! We're the captains round here. And if we want to call it treasure, gold, doubloons, or booty, we can. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's your job to just smile and nod. Got it? Good. Now go start the whole device. Yeah. Oh, that's another one. Have my age one. You better show us some respect, Carl, if you want to keep your limbs intact. Oh, I'll shut him up for a bit. We're coming back in five, four, three. Welcome back. I trust you all knew better than to go anywhere. I only got a few minutes till the machine behind me gets activated. So, tell us, Captain Magnus, what does it do? Well, Captain Wolf, as you know, we pirates love to say, Yo ho! Yo -ho! <laughs> well, my Euphoria device will increase the number of holes. Soon we'll all be saying, Yo ho ho! I don't trust it. What if it overloads? We could have a saying, Yo ho ho ho! Or, Yo ho 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 ho! Well, that's too many holes. I don't want to be saying, Yo ho 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 ho! We're not gonna be saying, Yo ho 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 ho! We're just gonna be saying, yo ho ho! One more ho, all right? Well, it better work, because one way or not, you know tonight, you be the entertainment. Don't you worry, we done appropriate preparations. The test will go plenty well, and then I think we'll need to discuss the terms of respect. 
about you tell us all how it all works? <laughs> Captain Donaldson, you are funny. Why would I tell you how my device does what it does? If I did that, that'd be the first moment I got a knife in me back. My first mate Mims over there would have done that years ago if he wasn't so fucking hopeless. Agreed. Although, we've got the device right here. So, it does beg the question, Captain Magnus. What do we need you for? <laughs> I thought you might try something like that. That's why I took precautions. Don't do anything to Ow! Hasty like that, Jesus! He's your merchant. Shut your mouth, prisoners! You're for trading, not for talking! Good work, Mr. Mims. I'm glad to see nothing went wrong. Now, where's the other one? Other one? <laughs> yeah. The one who's gonna fuck up your day. <laughs> now drop it, you fuck! I hope for your sake, Captain, that this device works. <laughs> because if it doesn't, you'll be in a world of pain trying to fix it. Press the button, Paul. Let's get these holes in and grab us some laundry. You see, that entire line's going to mean something totally different to a long day audience. Stop your brother and press the button, you Or I will kill you myself and press the button. All right, Ron, do it already. anyway. <laughs> Okay, pirate verse. Please, can we go? There's Wait. nothing even here. I can't reach my desk. And I've been a little ill. Wait, what? It was 3BL? Did I? Did I? I don't remember that. Okay, so 3MS. 3TV was a horror verse. 3MS. I thought I did that one. Yeah, <laughs> nice pirate story. Day 126. We shot this before. Everything everywhere all at once came out. Game oh, takes Winston, ages. Thank God. I haven't seen anyone all day. The whole building seems to be an enormous healthy buffet. I've been snacking the whole time. Oh. I've told you a thousand times, Cherry. It's the total number of fruit minus the total number of vegetables multiplied by the combined ability to keep medical professionals away. I honestly don't see why that's so hard for you to remember. If you could just wait here, please, Dr. Mandarin. The host will be with you shortly. Not him! I'm sorry, Dr. Mandarin. Wait, no, 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 please, no! Leave that alone, please, Colin. There it is. Then what is? You look really cute in this universe. <sighs> Back in a sec. Winston, it occurs to me, I think I might have been eating the staff. Specifically, Patrick. Guess I better go and find you. Don't yeah. tell anyone, all right? What's happened to her? No idea. Colin can handle it. He handles everything else. Anyway, Lemony Donaldson, this is Dr. Charles Mandarin. Ah, of course. Lemony Donaldson, professionally sour. All the sharpest minds are. Sorry I'm late. Colin left me in the dressing room again. <gasps> Professor Mandarin. Actually, it's doctor, apparently. Either is fine. And we're going live in ten. Colin! Shit. Five, four, three... Good evening, I'm Lemony Dolls. And I'm Mango Wolf. It's the 13th Mango of March, Wolf. 1985, and this is a Channel One of Your Five A Day special event, hosted by your national nightly fruit team. In a bowl, nestled on an occasional table in Chittleberry, Dr. Charles Mandarin and his succulently named Gesticulation Collective have been working on a secret project. They claim their ambulatory device will finally enable us all to grow our own arms and legs, whatever they are. Tonight, live on Channel One, we'll be putting that world-changing claim to the test. We'll be in our schedule throughout the evening with our team of reporters flying about up and down the country to report live on whether the device has actually given us all the ability to get up off our cores and move for ourselves. We'll have experts from the world of salad, pudding and preserves, and of course, those all-important results. So, 
Even though you soon might be finally able to, don't move that dial. Stick with Channel 1 all evening as we bring you The, the Night, Night of, of Limbs. Limbs. Okay, that's what you guys have to tell one. You're really prickly, you know. Funny, I was going to say the same thing to Lemony. I don't know what you mean. I have the rind of a young, fresh peach. Oh, you should probably give it back to her. <laughs> When we come back, we'll do the questions about your device, Dr Mandarin. OK. I'll need my presentation, though. Uh, yes, I believe we're just getting it ready now. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Ten seconds. I hit the <clears throat> Going live in five. Four, three. Welcome back. In just a few minutes, the scrumptious machine behind me will be activated and maybe, just maybe, we will all finally find ourselves freed from our bowls. But first, let's meet the man behind the movement, Dr Charles Mandarin. Hello. Dr Mandarin, this whole notion of granting fruit self-driven momentum, that's a little far-fetched, surely? Not at all, Lemony. After years of research, a top team, and some out-of-the-orchard thinking, we believe we've finally discovered the secret of rapid evolution. Well, then, please do tell us how it works. Ah, well, this is where my presentation comes in handy. If we could just flip over to the first page there. Thank you. There we are. So, as you can see, our current lack of movement will be solved by the additional growth of what I've named Limbza. These limbs will be subdivided into two categories. The first pair, we're calling them arms, will allow for more complex tasks and interactions with the environment. The second, currently called legs, are stronger but less precise and will enable us to change our location unaided. Wow, that is quite the claim. Do you have any idea as to the implications of such a large change? Well, of course, on the next page, uh, please... <clears throat> So, as you can see, we expect a significant increase in productivity for the average fruit. The capabilities of these limbs is really quite extraordinary. Yes, if we can work out how to use them. Dr Mandarin, this seems like dramatic, life-altering science. But have you run tests? Do we know this is even safe? Well, obviously risk can never be totally eliminated. You can't make a flan without losing a segment, as they say, Mr Donaldson. However, we've run numerous safety tests on vegetables. They are our nearest biological neighbours, after all, even if they do seem subsentient. We've brought in our prototype model to demonstrate tonight. Shit. Oh, <laughs> wow, well, uh, that is impressive. And it all works without damaging the poor vegetable. Well, we're more than 87% confident that any pain felt was minimal at most. All right, then. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Dr Mandarin. Now let's get that thing out of here, shall we? Whew, dirt fellas, give me the pips. We were hoping to go live to the new government presentation cushion for a special message from the Prime Ministers, Peach Clement and Julia Limesbury, but unfortunately he's got a bit pickled and she's worried he'll just take the piss. So... I think we're just going to make our way over to the machine. <laughs> oh, careful, Colin. Colin, Colin, I can't see. Uh, watch it! Just uh, oh. down here, Colin. <laughs> oh, I seem to be stuck on the... Oh. Colin, don't forget about Cherry! Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, um, I think we're all here. I can't really see, so there's that. <laughs> Who's here? I'm here! Me, Cherry Mims, 24 hours old. Oh, My favourite places are refrigerators, vineyards and black forests. Also, I'm here. As am I. Good. Well, let's get the countdown started then. Cherry? Uh, yes, sure. OK, uh, starting at ten. One, eight, eight seven, seven, six... six. Come on, Colin. Five, four... four. Three, two, one. Ah, uh, um, could you press that for me, please? Christ's sake. <laughs> Drop them. <laughs> Never liked them. Let's get out of here before the police arrive.
Okay, so three TA. <sighs> this must have the last clue. Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, this Hello. is lovely. Five. This way, please. This is Jeremy. Welcome, welcome. Delightful to meet you, Jeremy Donaldson. Doctor Charles Magnus. Oh. Chester Mims. What's happened to them? What is 324. This? What My favorite Gwangons are Garglax, Kitakill, and Peng. Fascinating. Shall we? Oh, yeah. This is excellent. Leave that alone, please, Colin. Robo Jenny. Brilliant. This is the future, then. It's the present, Colin. Are you feeling all right? Do you need to visit the Bliss Space? Bliss Space? How much does that cost? <laughs> You're so funny! Where is the best place? Same place it's always been. She was more helpful as a human. Don't be technophobic, please, Colin. The uploaded are just as human as everyone else. Is everyone in the future this sickly nice? I guess we'll find that out tomorrow. So not in the next five minutes, or? <laughs> Colin, you brighten my day, and I love you. Right. Last name. Sorry I'm late. I got caught up at the House of Sensation. No apology required. You're here on time. This is Dr. Charles Magnus. And this? Chester Mims, 324. My favourite... Ten seconds! I'll kiss you later. No need. I'm not much of one for formalities. <laughs> Good evening, friends. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. It's another beautiful day. And I'm Megan Wolfe. It's the 13th of March in the year 3751, and this is a galaxy-wide broadcast on Interstellar Wave Range 1. Humanity, as we know it today, is, of course, lovely. War, inequality, sickness, crime and death. These have long been just story beats in cautionary tales we tell our infant clones. But let us never forget that in our primitive past, these are accepted as inescapable parts of everyday life. And tonight, according to our guests, we will all be able to experience a long-forgotten sensation thanks to this, their despondency device. Welcome, friends, with love, to The, the Night, Night of, of Tears. Tears. About 40 seconds back. Oh, Jenny, you look lovely. New wheels. Temporary. I should get my body back next week. There was a hold-up. It's still only seven years old, but it'll be back the next Giving's Day. Oh, same one? Pretty much. A bit taller this time, I hope. How long does Find My need? No more than a minute. Wonderful. This gives us all a little time to get to know each other before the experiment. Are you scared? I don't know. What does that feel? Ten seconds. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's no even uh, no. bar here. Three. Welcome, friends, with love, to the Night of Tears. In just a few minutes, the impressive machine next to me will be activated. But before that, let's all adore the man behind the misery, Dr. Charles Magnus. Hello. So, Dr. Magnus, if your experiment works, and I, for one, believe that it will, tonight, for the first time in more than a millennium, human beings within range will experience what the history books have called sadness. Is that correct? You are indeed absolutely correct. By analyzing the surviving musical compositions and the literary works from before the fall, we believe we can artificially induce this long forgotten sensation, or at least something close to it, dissatisfaction, angst, or ennui. I've got to confess, I'm a little scared, Dr. Magnus. Oh, there's really no need to be afraid. We've set up the machine to automatically switch off after an hour, in case you become so sad we can't lift up our arms. 
goodness, can sadness do that? No one remembers, Megan. That's what makes this project so exciting. And you are Dr. Magnus's assistant. Chester Mims, 324. My preferred atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other stuff. Exactly. Yeah, as everyone. How everyone's. sad were your device makers, Dr. Magnus? I've heard legends that sadness can drive people to harm themselves or write poetry or become estate agents. Oh, no. Thanks to the sterling work by Dolores and the Atima Emotional Resonance, <laughs> we've been able to develop harmonic limiters that will keep oh, sadness yeah, levels to no more than a quiet, purpose. contemplative weep. Yes, I hear you've had a huge team working on this. Is there anyone else you'd like to single out for love at this time? Yeah. It would be remiss of me not to thank Doris, Doris and all of the staff at Metaversal Stability and, of course, Diana and the fine minds in variational linguistics. Don't forget about Doreen. No. Of course, Doreen in no. Temple Nonsense. Achievement and a team of child geniuses. Is there anyone else? Daisy in Televisual Variants. You think? Oh, why not? Yes. Thank you to Daisy in Televisual Variants. How many people worked on this project? Hundreds. Thousands, possibly. And it all culminates in this live test. But first, a message from the fine mind. Good evening. Hey, that's about 40 seconds back. There's a 90.1% good checks, Chester. I wonder what the evolutionary advantage to sadness was. A fascinating question, and it does seem an entirely redundant experience. Yes, mm. like anger or desire. We were animals. Indeed. And now we are evolved, probably unrecognizable to our primitive ancestors, collected at peace to calm. Ten seconds, everybody. The ultimate human. Yes. Oh, my flies are under. Ultimate. Going in five, four, three. Safe travels with love. Well, final checks are being carried out by Mr. Mintz, and I think we're just about ready to go. Excited, Dr. Magnus? Yes, I think I am. But hopefully soon, I will be utterly miserable. Indeed. On that, as on absolutely everything else, we can all agree. Well, let's push that button and see if we can't stop enjoying our perfect lives. Chester. Of course. And with love. Visit each different multiverse studio. I've got her details now, and I've added it to the Rolodex. You can call Professor Dolores Klein for the next loop whenever you're ready. Or you could keep exploring other universes, I suppose. I already explored every one of them. So, Professor Dolores Klein, Chintelbury Scientist Lecture Happiness Collective. Let's go. Ooh. A Tale of Love and Jazz Thank goodness we're back from the multiverse. A totally original idea here in 1985. Yeah. Never been done before. Of course. But I can't help feeling, given a few decades, everyone will be doing it. Anywho, we've solved this, so don't forget, we care about the audience again. Let's make it a good show. And with that in mind, I've managed to book Smiling Toots Johnson and his jazz fandango to play in the studio. If Mohammed can't go to the mountain, the mountain shall come to Mohammed. I've told you a thousand times, Chester. It's the number of blind dates I've been on when no one's turned up, followed by the worrying number... Oh. Hello. Professor Klein, I didn't know you were attending this evening. Good evening, Dr. Magnus. It was all a bit last minute, I think. Chester, did you know about this? If you could just sit here, please, Dr. Magnus. The host will be with you shortly. Not you. <clears throat> Sorry, Dr. Magnus. Are you not staying, Chester? 
Yes. Where, where are you going, Mr. Mims? S sit down. Didn't you just... Uh, Professor Klein and I think you have a lot to add. Leave that alone, please, Colin. This is more like it, yes. Everything's in its place. You're OK, Colin. Why can I just be... Glad you're not singing. Why would I be singing? Why? Exactly. Who's the mouse? Bozeman, book till last minute. Also, there's a new script on the auto queue and he says you're to talk about love. Who does Bozeman? Has he lost his fucking mind? It's a nice smile, Jeremy. Try one on for size. Jeremy Dawson. Professional matchmaker, apparently. <laughs> Goodness, I hope we won't be needing one of those. <laughs> a matchmaker? God, no. Uh, the very thought. <laughs> Sorry, Ridiculous. <laughs> Bozeman held me up. Did he ask you to...? Cupid here just relayed the message. I heard that. Well, I think you'd look really good with wings on, oh, actually. Yeah. Ten seconds. And a nappy. Ah, that's a look. Okay. Five, four, okay. three. Let's go. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Dawson. And I'm Megan Wolfe. It's the 13th of March, 1985, and this is a Channel One special event hosted by your national nightly news team. What is happiness? happiness. It's, a it's a question that has baffled artists and poets since the dawn of time. time. From the primitive, primitive caveman, caveman romantically rendering his intended unconscious with a simple stone, stone club, to the jazz man in spooky clothes. Loosening the beatles with each daring or the audience tap tap tap, tap tap in their toes to the crazy rhythms of the mysterious night in an effort to unwrap her most intimate secret. Who wrote this? Bozeman, apparently. Are you having a midlife crisis? And yet she eludes us, this fragile happiness that flits from heart to heart, staying only as a guest until, of course, we are found by our true love and our heart starts to beat in syncopation with another. For when we are in love, every moment is happy, every sound a melody, every face is radiant, beautiful and engrossing as an alley cat. And when they find the first word ever scrawled to the cave walls and the flickering light of that primitive flame, you can bet your soul that that word would be love. Or even jazz. So don't move that dial, stick with Channel One all evening as we bring you The Night, night of, of Love. love. You know, Winston, we've reached the end of our journey. There have been ups, there have been I'm downs. I'm not sure about it. But in the end, we've come through it a little older and a little wiser. And I, like you, am looking forward to going home. So let's make it a good one. More interesting what their conversation is right now. back. Not long now until we take a trip to Planet Bliss. So let's meet the interplanetary cat who will be our cosmic tour guide, Dr. Charles Magnus. Good evening. And with you, you have today... Chester Mims, 24. Uh, this is Professor Dolores Klein. She works in the Department of Emotional Residence and uh, has been responsible for fine-tuning the crystal molecules at, at the heart of the emitter. Goodness, that sounds like such an important job, Doctor. Uh, Professor Klein. I'm so sorry, of course. Oh, Professor please Klein. Call me, call me Dolores. Professor Klein sounds like my grandfather. Surely not THE Professor Klein, inventor of the word. Yes, that's him. <laughs> my goodness, what a contribution to history. Uh, at least until Florence came along and stole your thunder. Please don't use the F word in front of Professor Klein. Yes, yes, she finds it very upsetting. But I didn't use the F word, I just said fun. Will you stop saying that? Not fun. Oh, those things cost us everything we had. My grandfather died destitute. Crushed under a crate of his favourite worms he was trying to get down from the top shelf to polish. Now! Do you see what you've done? I've a good mind to cancel this experiment and walk oh, off the oh, show. Yes, yeah. hurrah! We've all worked too hard for too long. I will control my unmanageable rage. I apologise for my outburst, Mr Donaldson. That really wasn't an outburst. Never apologise for your passion, Dolores. 
It's what makes you so impeccable at your job. Impeccable. I might even say. Chester so memes on, feels will we all experience love. Oh Christ, no, no, no. That would be catastrophic. People in love are mentally ill. They they shouldn't be allowed to fly aeroplanes or perform sensitive tasks. No, our device will simply bring about a a sense of contentment. Love can be terribly painful. Yes. Best avoid it. Probably. There's enough subtext there to fill a poetry book, but apparently we are going to lift the needle from the grooves of the record of love and take a trip down river to the white waters of Advance HQ for the sounds and stylings of the country's most powerful couple. I am guessing that means we're talking to the Prime Ministers. So. Who, just to be clear, are in no way romantically involved. Well, that's probably a good thing. There's no place for romance in the workplace, after all. Can't say I disagree. Makes it hard to concentrate. I've heard. Yes. So have I. That's what I've heard too. Let's go to that message now. OK. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of Advance, Julia and I just wanted to wish all of you the very best of luck with tonight's groundbreaking experiment. When this project landed on my desk, I just knew it deserved to be funded. After all, what could possibly be better than increased happiness? And now, here's a little something what I wrote earlier, especially for tonight. It's a love poem which I want to dedicate to everyone at the Happiness Project and, of course, Mrs C. So it's a big well done from us to Dr Magnus and the entire team at the Happiness Collective. And now here's Peter and his poem, if you're quite sure. Absolutely, I spent all afternoon on this. <clears throat> Christ, I'm nervous. Oh, I'm not much of a poet, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Are you okay? God, come on, Clement, stop fuck arsing around and let's get the gimlet smiling. True love don't come along every day, so when it does, you should make hay. If that man gets you dripping, say yes to the whipping, as his famous old man used to say. <sighs> okay, um, good luck, everybody. <laughs> Back to the studio. <laughs> Fantastic, the Prime Minister's there, and of course, without the assets and wealth funding you received. We'd still be making prototypes out of uh, hope. <laughs> and you are Chester. Chester Mims, 24. I'm attracted to badgers, some shelving units, and women between the ages of 22 and 51. You're going to press the button, are you? Oh, I, I rather think the three of us should push it. Don't you, Professor Klein? Why don't you, uh, Put your hand on top of mine. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Dr. Magnus, why don't you put your hand on Professor Klein's? That's right. Why you don't do that? Go on, man. Uh, tell her this is what we've been waiting for. Are you all right, Charles? Oh, I feel a bit dizzy, if I'm honest. Do you need to sit, sit down? No. No, I... I think I need to say something. Something I should have said a long, long time ago. Well, perhaps you should say it during the break, Donaldson. Keep no, out no, of it, Donaldson. No, no you Keep out of it, Donaldson. How silly of me. What was I thinking? <coughs> OK, I think we're going to get a counter on the screen there. We're going in 10, 9, Nine eight, 8, 7, seven come on, Dr. Magnus, six, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I know. Why? I
Winston, I'm sorry. We've exhausted each and every one of my ideas. We even traversed through multiple parallel universes and we still couldn't solve this thing. I suppose we'll just have to get used to this tortured existence, trapped in time. Call Dolores again. We just did that, Alex. It was close, but no Fandango, I'm afraid. You might find it amusing to make my channel into a zoo, but I am in no mood. Oh, oh, I see. Throw everything together and maybe the chaos will push Magnus and Dolores together? Well, it's worth a shot, I suppose. Go for it, Winston. Make it happen. Okay. Let's make it happen. All good things. Day 126. Again. One more time. Frank, could you all gather on set, please? Jenny, what's going on? Oh, hello, Robert. Jeremy, Miss Wolf, assembled guests. All right there, Bobby. Ooh. Good evening, Mr. Algebra. <laughs> I've gathered you all here to help me with a televisual experiment. Why us? You are available. I'm between shoots. I have a book to promote. Look, whereas I've been up since five yelling at my staff at my capital restaurant, but I'm here too because I'm not fucking lazy. I'm just here to break hearts and sell garden furniture. Could we all please just focus? Sorry, Bobster. <laughs> Tonight's Ooh. television programme is entitled The Night of Smiles, ostensibly because we're testing the Euphoria device. But this is a ruse. There is but one aim and one aim alone for tonight's programme. Ratings. Ratings! No. Love. Oh, how gorgeous! Two of tonight's guests, namely Dr. Dolores Klein and Dr. Charles Magnus, have fostered a deep, unspoken love for each other through many years of tedious scientific research. Yet neither has had the courage to speak of their affections. Divine! in a film like this one. Oh, was that the love that couldn't sing? Oh, you've seen it? I've watched everything you've ever made, usually with my trousers off. I'm sorry, Robert, but we've been planning this show for weeks and surely the experiment takes Fuck priority the experiment! Here. You have no idea what you're talking about. I've seen more versions of this than I care to remember, and I know more about the next ten minutes than the greatest minds in history. Just get the two fucking scientists together and I will buy you all fucking houses. Understood? Is that understood? Yes. yes. Good. I'm trying not to be too obvious about it, Alan. Why is he picking on me? You've just got one of those faces. Oh, and don't mention flards. Um. Crazy Neil never mentions flards. We've still got six containers of worms to ship. Oh, well, they'll never sell. Everyone's using flards these days. More stable at the knuckle joint. <laughs> you never forget your first flard. Great for basting. And for throwing at your kitchen staff. The third Mrs. Neal kept one in the bedside drawer. <laughs> oh, sweetie, we all do that. I literally just told you not to talk about fucking flards. Jenny, get the scientists. Let's get this started up again. <laughs> what did he mean again? I'd explain, but you'd think I was weird. I deeply resent being a matchmaker. So don't then. This is my wheelhouse. Definitely leave it to someone with an EQ. <laughs> You'll replace me one day, you know. Oh, don't be so silly. You're irreplaceable. Even so, you will. You're the best I've ever seen. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we could clear the sofa, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's my chair, Jeff. Oh, Christ, sorry. Yeah, right you are. Yeah. Um, room for no! one? Right, yes. Sorry, no, of course, yeah. Not in the staff room now, Jeff. <laughs> oh. I think there's, um, there's room Jeremy here. saves oh, the oh, day again. You. Oh, I'll just budge up a bit. Ah, uh, room for me on the end here, probably. <gasps> <laughs> sorry, excuse me. <laughs> just... Bit of a squash. Would you rather I stood? No, no, you're, you're fine, Charles. Remember, everybody, L O V E. Ten seconds, everybody. They're scientists. They can spell, you doof not. Five. Four. Right. I've three. done everything I can, Winston. The rest is up to you. 
I'm Have Jeremy Dennis, and I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 13th of March, 1985, and you You're are right here with up. us. I, I'm sorry. You, you seem to be perspiring rather a lot. My uh, heart is experiencing a mild acceleration, I think. Oh, let me check. Is this a good time to mention my new book? We haven't even got to the opening titles yet, Alan. What are you going to keep that book on, friend? Oh, God, not you as well. You want to buy a shelf? We've got all sizes, crazy sizes, in crazy prices. Let's have a look at that book, friend. Yeah, it's here. In this. What is that? You. Come here. Come here. What is that? Do you know? Nah, -uh. too crazy for me. You're a maths guy. What? A, mm. What? Mm. They wanted the dimension. Mm. They're inches, aren't they? Your heart rate is extremely fast. Are you all right, Charles? I feel as if an eruption is building inside me. If I'm honest, Dolores. What V I? Oh, as much as seven, I'd say. Do you mean millimeters, Alan? What? Hmm. Do you mean millimetres? Oh, I see what's happened there. Fucking useless! My book! Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. I just... I just needed a bit of a... Oh, yes, I, I just... Yes, I, I, I'm feeling a bit better now. Oh, please watch out for my tiny book! Doctor, are you quite all right? Yes, I, I, I think it's just a little anxiety. Oh. From me. I'm, I'm so sorry, Charles. You're probably allergic to my perfume. No, it's it's not you. <laughs> you smell like a, a puppy on a fresh spring morning or a, an orchard in bloom. It's not you, Dolores. It's probably <coughs> just the experiment. You know, it's times like these you could really use a flawed. No. Fucking algebra. There it is. Sorry, uh, probably my accent. I said, it's at times like these you could really use a flaw. Oh, for fuck's sake. What's fucking wrong with you? What? Look, what is your problem with flards anyway? Flards destroy my family. Ah, wash my hands. <laughs> oh, Charles. You saved me. And I always will, Dolores, if you let me. I love you, Dolores. Even if it did take a, a, a mild workplace accident to enable me to say it. Yeah, you're kind of just sitting on me now. At last! Oh, gosh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just roll the opening titles! <laughs> Channel One. Well, Winston, this menagerie of chaos you've come up with better be worth it. Of course, it goes without saying that if we do break out of the loop this time, we'll go home to our respective families, carry on as normal, and never speak of this again. Wouldn't want to have any confusing references or continuity breaks in the future. Hmm? Yeah, but this now looks like a really special event. smiles. The machine behind us will make you all happier. Believe it? Neither do I. But let's press the button anyway and see what happens. <laughs> wow, yes, let's do that. I think we can get a counter on the screen here. There it is, and we're going in ten. Nine, come on everyone. Eight, Eight on, Magnus. seven, come six, come on, Magnus. Five, four, three, two, two, eight. Dr. Magnus? I'm sorry, Chester. I'm sorry, everyone. But the experiment cannot proceed. Thank God. Charles. What are you talking about, old boy? Ah, don't worry about it. I've been a fraud for years. My real name's just Neil. This device is a fraud. A paper tiger. No, 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 Dr. Magnus, we've achieved everything. It doesn't matter. 
We don't need a machine to bring us happiness any more than we would want someone to eat for us or laugh for us. We don't need a euphoria device. <laughs> happiness is everywhere already, and it's different for everyone. For me, it's how I feel when I look into Dr. Klein's eyes. And at her meticulous research. But for you, it might be a particular view at sunset, or the darkness of a theater just before a play is about to begin, or your mother's cooking, or all of these things, or a million other things. We don't need anything to make us happy. We just have to go out and grasp it. Just a Inhibit the machine. Yes, Dr. Magnus. Machine inhibited. <laughs> Suppose we can all go home. Oh. So there you have it. And if you want happiness, Go out and get it. So what now? We're going to the CFL? Really? OK, if you say so. We apologise for the change in tonight's schedule, which was mainly caused by... Well, by love, I suppose. <laughs> the universe is probably safer, and our boss owns us a house, so all in all, a good evening. But it's about to get even better as we have a treat uh -huh. in store. It's all the highlights from today's semi-finals of the Feline Football Championships. So let's go to that now. Jolly good show there, Alex. Jolly good. I'll see you tomorrow when we can get back to the real news. No. Hey, where are you going? Yeah, yeah. We escaped the time. Finally. Yeah, that was funny. Really interesting. Like it. As usual, great game. I really like it. Too bad I missed other DLCs, but this one was good. Really good. I like all those characters. Uh, They're pretty good. Love and Magnus, Megan Blue, Jeremy Dunn. So, what? The cat football cap. Alright, lovers, Gary Kimberly, you join me for the CFL Championship Cup semi finals. The Fluffers versus the Meows. Seven minutes on the clock. The Duke with the first goal of the game, a flick of the tail, nonchalantly into the net. As you can see, Dutch is in support. Any part of the ball crossed the line is a goal. All getting lively in the semi-final now. You can see Tiddles has a go at Cuff, but knowing he's going to get that reaction, he gets exactly what he wanted. Poor to the face. It's an early red card. They're down to three caps in a semi-final. The returning Cuff, but makes no difference here. Top scorer for the Fluffers this season, Duke. Rear hind finish from the halfway line. Absolutely blinding. There's a clear instruction here at halftime from Monty Fortune. Get out there, lay the law back down to them, boys. Do not let them get away with this. Fight, fight, fight! The Duchess has a go at Cuthbert, and as you see, he sneaks off to the on-field vet. He's going to need stitches. Last action of this semi-final. Unbelievable finish. Here he goes, rear high. Balls, there he goes. It's unbelievable. Off the post and in. It's 3-0. It's game over. And in the words of Monty Fortune, true master trouncing!
Okay, so that's it for Time Loop. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash like if you did. Leave your comments and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.